Hello, this is your captain speaking, and we're back with more Kerbal Space Program, and today we're on the runway with the Aegis Dynamics Vanguard from Star Citizen. I've spent the last, like, four hours recreating this thing to look as close to the Vanguard as I could get it, and I'm amazed, actually amazed, with how well it did. Uh, just ignore the fact that VAB is destroyed. Um, nothing bad happened to it. Nothing constellation related crashed into it earlier. Just ignore that. This thing flies pretty damn well. Uh, it's got a it's got a little bit of balancing issue once the fuel starts to run out. But what impresses me the most about this is just how incredibly far into space I can get this thing. I managed to get this thing to go SSTO, and it might have been a fluke. I haven't tested it again. I got it into orbit once, I want to see if I can do it again with you guys, and it'll be amazing. This flying flies so well, I love it. I want to try and touch it down real quick on the run- well, I'm not gonna- I'm gonna miss the runway. Well, I'll cut to me landing on the runway. There we go. That's better. I got, uh, rapier engines on the back here, and they don't look- they don't look super like the, uh, the engines on the Vanguard, because simply nothing like that exists in Kerbal Space Program, unless you- unless you have mods, but- it's got uh, these two little ancillary thrusters underneath the wings here, which I think might get blocked off by the wing surfaces when I um when I'm nosing down. Speaking of nosing down, oh god, oh god, pull up, pull up. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, that was bad. It has a little bit of trouble recovering when you nose down like this. Oh no, no no no. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, all right, I'm gonna launch it again so I can land it on the runway. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. All right, I'm coming up on the runway here. I'm gonna pop down my landing gear and just try and glide it in. Uh, this is the balance issue I was talking about, really. It noses down a lot more than it, uh, it noses down a lot more than I'm comfortable with nosing down, so we're gonna have to give this a little bit of thrust before we hit the ground here. Uh, keep our speed, keep the thrust low, but it's necessary so we don't go plong plong into the ground here. All right, coming down on the runway. Oh, too fast, too fast. Oops. I'm really nervous because those tails are gonna shatter if they even touch the ground at all. Hey! Okay, we touch down. Don't turn too much. When you have, like, stacked landing gears like this, it has a tendency to want to, like, try and follow one landing gear over the other and then flip the fuck out and send your ship spiraling into the ground and into walls and into buildings but i successfully landed it and now for our next test we're going to try and take this the glorious vanguard into space without any kind of additions or anything this is just as it is might add some solar panels because i i have been running out of electric charge let's go all right, added very little changes to it. I did add some uh, battery packs and little um, generators under the wings here. Uh, oh shit, that's not balanced. Uh oh. Oh well. Fuck it. How much can it weigh? How much can it mess up the mission? We'll find out when I crash into the ground. Let's go. It seems to want to pull to the left when I'm taking off on the runway, which is. Mildly worrisome. Alright, we have liftoff. God, this thing works. Works pretty damn well. It took a lot of tweaking. I've been working on this for hours, but I'm impressed with how well it does fly. And now we start the long and tedious process of getting into orbit, which I'm gonna cut the fuck out of the video so you guys aren't totally bored. Ah, oh, man, look at that top down. I gotta compare that to, uh, to an image when I'm editing this, because that's pretty impressive looking. Like, it looks pretty close to the actual ship. I'm really proud of this one. Uh, the intakes here, it's kind of a mess. Uh, I'm not gonna lie about that one. Um, it's, with the parts I have in Global Space Program, sometimes it's not always easy to get it looking 100% like, like the way I want it to look. But, I think I did a pretty good job. It has plenty of intakes. Uh, plus all those, like, the ridiculous amount of, okay, it's not ridiculous. Star Citizen ships tend to have a lot of intake on them, especially like the, the ones that look more like they're built for speed, which makes sense! And it's very good for Kerbal Space Program if I want to, uh, if I want to build SSTOs like this. 200 meters per second now, we're at, uh, we're at almost 12 kilometers here. Okay, it looks like our intake air is running out in at least one of our engines. Which ones is gonna... It always goes out first in at least one engine. I know this. 
It's happened to me many times and screwed me over on multiple occasions, so I'm interested to see which one will go on first. It doesn't really show it on rapier engines, though. They'll just automatically switch over. But it's gonna pull to... Okay, I'm gonna make a wild gamble here. Wild guess. I bet myself twenty dollars it's gonna pull to the right once the engine starts to switch over to uh to liquid fuel mode, to oxidizer mode, to whatever fucking I don't know call it. I'm not a rocket scientist. Oh what's that? Oh it's pulling to the right! Oh I just lost and gained twenty dollars. That's amazing. Good job me. Also, you suck me. I have some weird personal psychological issues I gotta work through here. Okay, switch over to um, oxidizer mode, so it's burning fuel, through fuel a lot flat, faster now, but we're also getting a lot more speed. Okay, we're out of fuel in our um, little main main engine back here, but we still got these two, so we should be fine. There's a ton of fuel left in those, too. Okay, I think we'll be okay. We have uh, got our Apo apps up to 60 kilometers at this point. I'm gonna keep burning on that. Boom. Okay, Apo apps is 100 kilometers. This thing successfully got itself into space suborbital. That's a good start. I added a little bit of RCS here, which um, just realized did not angle it so great. So I can turn left to right, but it has no uh, no pitch control. <laughs> Whoops. Need to uh, need to improve on that the next time I go into the VAB here. That was poor decision making on my behalf. But okay, well, we can work with it. That's fine. And then I'm gonna do a maneuver node, which is rare for me going to orbit, but I'm so nervous about this not working that I'm gonna do a little maneuver node. All right, 121, that should be good. Uh, node in not that many seconds. It should have started burning like 20 seconds ago, but uh, I set the node up super late. Maybe I should be nervous about this, because I'm going to fuck it up, probably. Okay, we need a uh, we need 1,000 meters per second delta V here. I think we'll be perfectly fine with the fuel we have left in this, left in these tanks. I'm excited. We're already almost halfway done with the burn here. We still have a bunch of fuel left, just buttloads of fuel. Hope we don't run out of oxidizer, but I have oxidizer in this tank, and then liquid fuel left over in this tank, which I did not... Did not balance that very well. My bad. We're pointing ourselves a little bit below the horizon here, but the uh, the cockpit is slanted at a downwards angle, so our um, our angle of attack is actually different from our dead forward in the ship. What's the uh, maneuver node doing there? Oh, you know what that camera shift means? We just entered orbit. Boom! Vanguard SSTO. Yes, that's awesome. Ha <laughs> ha! Got it into orbit. Okay. Okay, great. So, we got that into orbit. We got the Vanguard into orbit, and I'm super excited about it. And now, we, uh, I don't know, I feel like maybe I should stick to a little bit of tradition here and try and get this thing to land in uh, the desert next to the other two ships, which are still down there. They haven't been recovered at all. Well, there's the wreckage from the, uh, from the Hornet, and there's the Aurora, which has landed down there in the desert. So if I can try and get this one to, like, at least come in and glide in to Kerman's atmosphere and land within within a couple of kilometers of those other two ships. I feel like I'll be keeping the tradition alive, and I want to do that. All right, I think, don't quote me on this, because I don't know what I'm doing, but I think if I do a burn here, I'll be able to bring myself, with the fuel I have, low enough down into... Um, into the atmosphere to be able to land next to the Aurora. So I'm gonna do my my retrograde burn here, and let's go. It's all dark. You can't see shit. Is the lights on this thing? Not really. They don't light up very well. That's a shame. Okay. Do my retrograde burn. It's a bit high. Bring it down a little bit more. Okay. We seem to be at quite the inclination here too, which is a little bit problematic for um for landing by the Aurora. I wonder if I'll be able to angle that at all with the very minimal fuel I have left. So let's see if I can set up a maneuver node for a four second burn. I do not have four seconds worth of fuel left in this thing. I have 29 liquid fuel units left in it. But I'm gonna do a do a little um okay. Born cup born? Burn coming in two, one, do a burn. And I'm out of fuel. I burned out of fuel. Well shit. Okay. 
I still have 13 fuel left in, um... God, I still have... Th okay, I have 13 fuel left in this... This engine right here, which will be useful for when I, um... For when I get into the atmosphere, because I can use that as a jet with the very minimal fuel it has left in there. This should be interesting. Alright. I got a little bit of an inclination change, so I'm coming in closer to the Aurora. Still probably not going to make it there. And I... The way I did my burn, I probably, uh... Probably fucked up for me being able to even reach it at all, because by the time I get closer to it, the planet is going to have rotated to where I'm probably going to be, like, way behind the Aurora. So, we would have to get there based more on gliding power, which I don't think this thing is entirely capable of. But it'll be interesting to try. Ah, another beautiful sunrise over Carbon. We're, we're 35 kilometers up. That's lower than I, than I was expecting by now. Looks like we're not going to make it to the Aurora unless I can, like, super glide there. Uh, still going to use RCS to control myself a little bit, so I, so I don't lose total control. We're getting pretty low and we haven't lost control yet, so that's good. It's a good sign. We're getting re-entry hitting, though. Oh, God. I'm nervous about this one. I still want to have a lot of speed, so I'm going to point myself forward and try and go a little bit less resistance here. So I can get towards the Aurora. I really want to aim for that. Even though it's stupid and probably going to get me killed. But I want to go for it. Uh, while I have this opportunity to talk. I mean, I've been talking this entire video. And that's kind of the point of this whole channel. Is talking to you guys about uh, Kerbal Space Program and dumb butt jokes. Uh, I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers. Hello. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I'm almost at 250 subscribers. That's a, That's like fucking... That's a quarter of a thousand people. Oh my god. What are you guys doing here? You're being awesome and I appreciate that. Uh, it's super awesome to have all you guys here. I'm just, uh, I'm sure with all of your, um, <laughs> your hope and your help and your mental guidance that I'm totally going to land this thing. <laughs> We're fucked. <laughs> okay, okay. I took... I took it off the screen for a second to scratch my ear! <laughs> I mean, I took it off the keyboard, I took my finger off the keyboard to scratch my ear, and now we are doing this number. Oh god, no. Oh no. Okay, I can recover from this. This is not hard to recover from. Mm, power it through! RCS, come on, don't let me down! Okay, what just happened there? Uh, I'm gonna spin. I could... Mm, okay. I'm spinning. I'm spinning. I'm in a flat spin. This is not good. I'm in a tailspin. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckbird. <laughs> it's a duck blur? I don't know. It's been a while since I've watched DuckTales. But this is how I'm feeling right now. I am not like a... Like Launchpad McQuack right now. I am like... Scrooge McDying. Because I'm gonna crash this thing in the fucking ground. I still have this jet. I'm gonna power up my jet engine here. Oh, we had a little bit of jet fuel left in those ones too. Okay. We have 13 units of fuel. I'm going to try and battle this as much as I can. We're thrusting against it. Oh, we're getting so little push out of this. I can't turn around at all. Okay. Whoop. Try and go towards the prograde vector. Oh, yeah. There's the vector. Oh, no, I'm losing it. The balance is so messed up. That's why it's fucking up like this. Come on. I could... Uh, okay. I have to... Burn... Burn retrograde. We'll see if that'll work out. I'm gonna straighten myself out here. Get a burn retrograde. Ten units of fuel left. Yeah, we're not getting much push out of this anymore. Okay. Change of plans. Let's try and push... Push with RCS. Ah, dang it, I have no pitch control. Oh no, this is gonna this is gonna be bad. No! Ah, don't crash it! Everyone's watching! Scott Manley might be watching! Oh god, I'm letting Scott Manley down. I'm sorry. Well, this was the Vanguard! Oh my god! Chad's B. Kerman survived! I'm calling that a successful flight, and we are only, uh... How far away is that? How far away did we land from that? Set us target. We are only... 
77 kilometers away from the Aurora. We landed in kind of desert. What is this? Not really sure. It's kind of like grassland, but it's a little bit deserty. It's it's uh it's good enough for me. That's what it is. It's good enough for me. That was the Vanguard. Thank you so much for watching. This is your captain signing off. Bye.